One of the amazing things about humans and athletes at their peak performance is how well we can calculate velocities and more importantly changes in velocity as people are moving. And so with the quarterback, as you're watching the wide receiver make their run and you're trying to determine when to release the ball, how fast to release it, and what direction to release it so that the ball and the wide receiver get to the same point at the same time. If you assign this to physics students in, in their physics classes, it's probably the hardest type of problem in this category. But if you think about a really good quarterback, they do it all the time naturally. One of the things when you're noticing watching football, the quarterback make that really nice long pass, we're basically talking projectile motion. And all that comes into it is the initial velocity the quarterback can throw it with and the angle he throws it at. Now with a football, there's that added twist. You'd like to get the spiral on it. Because once it's in the air, the only two things that interact with the football are gravity, which is trying to drag it down, and air friction or air drag, which is trying to slow it down. And if you think about that shape of the football, it's nice and aerodynamic as long as the nose is pointed in the direction it's going. When something spins, in physics we call it angular momentum. And if you want to change the direction something is spinning in, you have to apply a torque. Once you get that football spinning and drag and gravity are acting on it, the spin stabilizes it. What matters with the football is that it's pointing along that long axis of the football. And you want to think of that as a nice solid rod that's not going to move unless there's enough torque on it. It will help with distance having a good spin and angular momentum because it keeps your air drag down. An object spinning wants to keep the exact same spinning motion it has. And Newton wins one more time.